Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast, part two of our conversation with David Stein, Atlanta radio host, is brought to you by Compassion International. $38 a month, food, education, medical care, vocational training, all done in the name of Jesus. Listen, every child should have the basic necessities of life, food, education, medical care, vocational training. And this is where you come in. You can make a difference in a child's life for 38 bucks a month. That's all it is. And it releases children from poverty. It's that simple and it's that powerful. And you can make that difference through Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. Compassion.com slash sports spectrum. That's the website to go to and sponsor a child today. Today on the podcast, part two of our conversation, and I just say conversation because it's it's more than that. It is a powerful story of David Stein, Atlanta radio host, and the host of Risenstein and Victory 91.5 FM in Atlanta. David's also the spiritual development pastor at Revolution Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is part two of our conversation. Yesterday on part one, if you heard it, you're probably shaking your head because David shared a little bit in the beginning about his love for Clemson football, but then we got into his conversion story. And this is a guy who was a Jewish atheist. And that is usually someone who does not equal becoming a man of faith in Jesus. And yet David is now that. And when you look at his story and when you listen to his story, and I cannot encourage you enough to go back and listen to part one, of this conversation before you come here to part two. It's improbable, unlikely. I mean, it's just incredible. And so go back and listen to part one. David shares about his faith in Christ and how it came about. Part two we dive into today starts with me asking him about whether he investigated this faith. Because it's one thing to be Jewish and then be an atheist and then have a conversion to Christianity but then to truly investigate it. And his answer might surprise you when you hear what he had to say about that. And then we talked about evangelism and telling others about Jesus and having to have that conversation with his Jewish parents. So that's an interesting sidebar to all this as well and the difficulty that comes with becoming a Christian when you've been raised in a Jewish household. And then a really cool story at the end about finding his new wife and really going into ministry and working at the radio station that he does, Victory 91.5 FM in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's get to part two, one of the more improbable conversations, improbable testimonies of anyone I've ever talked to about faith in Christ. This is David Stein, Atlanta radio host here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. People have an encounter with Christ, people having, uh, you know, a change in their life. They're seeing sort of fruit taking place, but still you're coming from a Jewish atheist background. Did you ever sort of investigate this faith that you felt was right, but you had to kind of actually look and see that you believed why you believed in it? You know, because t- someone telling you that Jesus came and died on the cross is great and it's right and it's correct. It's what I believe as well. But then it's almost like, well, okay, is this true? Have you, did you go through that process after you became a Christian? That is an excellent question, Jason. Um, as a matter of fact, I didn't, uh, because I believe it was, a, it was the Holy Spirit Interesting. Okay. That, that changed my heart instantaneously, <laughs> that it was an instantaneous regeneration of my heart. There is, there is information and then there's transformation. And I believe that uh, any act of the Holy Spirit to take a life that was dead and make it alive is instantaneous. So I, I actually never questioned hmm. what had happened. I, I, I just said, I am all in for this Jesus. Now, here's, here's how I know that. The day before, so September 25th, I was making fun of Christians. I was making fun of people as they were going to church. Hmm. Wow. I, I would, I would sit out on my balcony uh, on a Sunday and just, just make fun of people. 
whoever I was with, we would just be joking. I can't believe they're believing in that stuff. And I was blaspheming Jesus. And up until that moment, and, and I'm sure that there are Jewish listeners right now. And by the way, I feel so much closer to my Jewish roots now than I've ever felt. Uh, we've been to Israel twice in the last couple of years. Uh, my wife and I celebrate Passover, for, but, for, but with New Testament eyes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an exciting time in my life to really understand that the Old Testament, the New Testament, that's just one book with one story, and it's all about Jesus. But the words Jesus Christ in my house growing up and as an adult Jewish male made me cringe. Hmm. And then on September 26th, the words Jesus Christ were the most beautiful things I had ever heard. So I, I knew it was an instantaneous regeneration. That's awesome. David, how, how did you go about sharing this transformation <laughs> that took place? Because I remember myself, I was 26, but I was still, mm -hmm. you know, 26 years of my life without the Lord. And, you know, many people have conversions and have, uh, you know, new, new life found in Christ at different stages of their life. And you're 45 here, I think is what you said. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's a different stage of life. I'm wondering what it was like to, I, you know, I know you had a, a broken marriage, even telling, you know, going back to that, if you even had communication with your mm -hmm. ex-wife, with your mm -hmm. parents, all mm -hmm. of that with old friends, what was that process like, or what, was it fairly easy for you? I took that on a case by case basis, Jason. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> um, with, uh, with with my parents, it was difficult. Uh, it probably took me six months to tell them. Uh, right? My yeah. my dad was was more open because my dad was more of a hey, you know, whatever works for you. He, he he's that kind of guy. My mom, on the other hand, uh, was was devastated, mm. and to this day. Uh, She's she's still upset, but she sees the difference in my life. She cannot deny the difference in my life. And I have to I have to remind her over and over and over again. I, I did not leave my Jewish roots. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm more Jewish than I ever have been. And I love uh, I love our people more than I've ever loved our people. But but there's still a betrayal especially as I said, they're 87 years old and they had grown up during the Holocaust. That is a big wall for the Jewish people to get over um, because they do believe that Hitler did what he did in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and, and my parents don't understand, Hey, there's evil. And that was done from a pure evil heart. Yeah. What about as you grow in your faith and, and you're still working in 2006, I believe. You're definitely working in national sports radio still at the time. Yeah. So yeah. now you're a Christian. And then eventually, as I gave it away in the very beginning, you're now working for uh, a Christian radio show. Uh, and you're also a pastor. All of this is, I want to talk about real quick. But mm -hmm. going from being in sort of secular world as a believer versus a non-believer, how did that change for you? how you approached your job? Uh, great question again. Um, I, I remember, I remember calling my friend Rich Fry, who was one of the producers at, at premier radio uh, when I was working at Fox and I knew that he was a Christian. Uh, uh and I called him, uh, the next day and I said, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> and, I can just imagine and and we just started crying uh on the phone together and and i went into sporting news that night i was doing uh, uh west coast 11 p.m to 3 a.m and i just i was so blessed to have awesome producers awesome bosses and and i just remember saying guys uh, something happened last night and uh I just got to tell you about it. I don't know how this is going to play out on the air. Um, but I, I wound up eventually in a very short period of time, just kind of bringing in this new faith that I had into secular sports talk radio. And I'll never forget one night, um, 
a guy called up and I was very open on the air about my addictions and very open to having people call up and talk about their struggles because it's the middle of the night. Yeah. You know, there, there may, may be some people that do want to argue about, you know, who's the, uh, argue about death charts and things like that. But, you know, I wanted to have real conversations with real men who are, are up late at night. Maybe they're truckers, maybe they're working a third shift in Chicago and, and a guy called up and he's crying. He's talking about his addictions and he, he just flat out asked, he goes, how, how did, how did you get to the point where you are right now? And there was this long pause. And I remember looking over my producer through the glass and he smiled and I said, well, if you really want to know, and then I just flat out told him about Jesus on the air. <laughs> no backlash so, at all from that. Well, I, I got a call from uh, my boss, uh, Craig Larson, uh, that morning, right after the show. And I was like, oh, boy, here we go. Uh, I'm going to be looking for a job. Right. Yeah. And, and, and he said, I heard that call. Keep doing what you're doing. Wow. That had to be so encouraging. It, it was. It was. And, and again, uh, the, the guys that I was working with, uh, I think of a guy named Howard Tillman who was – uh, work in the board for a period of time on the show. He was hearing these things happen each night. He went on his own, his own faith journey and, and wound up going to rabbi school. He went to rabbinical college. Wow. Um, and, and another guy went on to become a pastor. Uh, so th there were things happening in the middle of the night that had nothing to do with us. It was all uh, Holy Spirit driven and, um, it was it was pretty wild. And and even the Clemson show, uh, which started in 2010, when I met with uh, my first co-host, who is now uh, a play by play announcer at ESPN, Roy Philpott, uh, super guy. Yeah. I said, I said, Roy, um, I don't know where your faith is. Here's where mine is. This is not a football show for me. We're, we're going to talk about football. We're going to talk about Clemson. We are the welcome mat for Clemson University for 11 hours of football broadcasting every day. But 100,000 people are coming to this campus on Saturday. And I don't know how many thousands of people are going to be listening. If, if we don't give them some hope in God, if we don't tell them about Jesus at some point, we've wasted this time. And, and over the years, uh, I had uh, two other co-hosts and uh, my last co-host for the last four years, William Qualkenbush, an amazing young man, such a solid believer. We just use it as a platform. And if there was an opportunity to be interviewing somebody and we knew that they uh, they were a believer, we we kind of weave that in there. And there were so many times over the last eight years that in commercial breaks, we're able to share the gospel with somebody or, or at least encourage somebody uh, with a verse. So uh, I just went after it. So to, so to answer your first question of how did you take uh, um, your newfound belief into your life, I, I tried to tell as many people as I could, and I still do that today. Uh, I even use the, the championship ring that um, – Shockingly, I got a championship ring back in 2016. I, I don't wear it. But it's a little blingy for me. Um, I'm but I'm sure it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it weighs about a pound and a half. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, I keep it in my pocket. And if I see a football fan, hey, sports is the greatest entry point to sharing the gospel there is. There's no better icebreaker. That's why I wear team gear all the time. I wear Clemson gear all the time uh, because it does spark a conversation, even if it's with an Alabama fan. And and uh, a few weeks ago on a plane to Oklahoma City, there was a, a, a young man. He was wearing an Alabama sweatshirt. So I just tossed him the ring and uh, he said, what are you doing? I said, well, 12 years ago when Jesus changed my life, stuff like this doesn't mean anything to me anymore. And wow, that's a cool yeah. opportunity. And then I showed him the score on the side of the ring. <laughs> oh, by the way, it was, it was 35, 31. Huh. Uh, <laughs> that's and, great. I love that. And I, I just started asking him questions and 
by the time we got off the plane, he was trusting in Jesus. And, and I, I know that's not me. It's just an opportunity that God has placed in front of me because I pray every single day, Lord, give me those opportunities and give me boldness be able to tell people about the hope that I have. So good. Yeah, that's right from 1 Peter 3.15. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that's in you. And that's awesome that you acted on that. A couple more questions here with David Stein on the podcast. So you turned from secular radio and now you're working in Christian radio in Victory 91.5 in Atlanta, Rise and Stein. I mentioned it at the beginning of the of the episode that uh, the title of your show and your co-host of that show, I think is an interesting story too. And that goes back to you and Dabo having that conversation in Galatians 6, 9. So why don't you share that story leading into what you're Mm -hmm. doing now with Victory 91.5? Yeah. Well, uh, I didn't know if God was going to give me a second chance at marriage. And (laughs) it was funny after Dabo said, go find yourself an Alabama girl. I, (laughs) <laughs> I, I mean, I, I knew I could cross the border and go find a girl, but uh, I wasn't looking. And I was just in a season where, man, this feels really great to pursue the Lord. And I was still working at Sporting News uh, in Atlanta now and doing the show from a station downtown. And I was working on the show one day from a Starbucks in Woodstock, Georgia, because I didn't have the internet at home. I had cut that out of my life. And there was free internet at Starbucks. So I figured, hey, let's let's go there. Hmm. And uh, there's a girl sitting there. Uh, I'm not looking. So I didn't talk to her. I didn't look at her. I didn't. Uh, no wink. I had no game whatsoever. <laughs> Three no hours line, later. nothing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Three hours later, I get up and leave. Now, what I don't know at the time is that the Holy Spirit spoke to her as I'm walking out the door, the Holy spirit says to her, that's the man you're going to marry. So I don't know this is going on. Right. I just go back to that Starbucks three weeks later and, and I turn around in line and I do recognize it's the same girl. And I began the conversation with her and 60 days later we got engaged and 60 days after that we got married. That's pretty quick. <laughs> so I guess you act on the Holy Spirit, right? God is a redeemer and a restorer and a rescuer. And uh, um, and he gave me that second chance at marriage. And it has been amazing. And uh, 2011, I left Sporting News to go to a fledgling talk radio network. And uh, three months into that, that network folded. And the very same day that that network folded, I get a call from a friend who's working at a Christian radio station in Atlanta. And he goes, hey, I know you're busy with your show and all, but we could use some help down there. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not as busy as you think I am. And uh, I wound up doing weekends at the Joy FM uh, just south of Atlanta and met some guys at Victory 91.5 about a year later. And began to uh, to work there, and this was a couple years into our marriage. And my wife stopped by the station one day on her way home from a garage sale to show me some ugly chairs that she had bought. <laughs> and <laughs> and I did what any encouraging, loving husband would do. I shoved a microphone in front of her, and she knocked it out of the park. She killed it. And, uh, the boss heard us bantering back and forth. Next thing you know, we're the new morning show. And that was five and a half years ago. Uh, her sister called it the rise and Stein show. And (laughs) I was like, I was like, okay, that'll that'll be fine. Um, and now, now not only do I get to, uh, work with my wife, but I get to set her up so she can speak what God has been putting in her heart for the, for the last several decades. Uh, she worked as a, uh, a missionary in China for the year before we met and God was really work drawing her back to him. And, uh, she has something to say to women. And I just marvel at number one, how funny she is. Uh, she's, she's the funniest woman I've ever met. And number two, how much she has to say. 
So it's, it's not about me, uh, which is great. And, and I get to just set her up and, and we have fun just talking about marriage and, uh, just this, the stuff that we've been having going on in our lives. Uh, you know, this week we, we, we spent, uh, quite a bit of time talking about, uh, old field trips that we went on when we were in elementary school and just anything that's going to be funny. Oh yeah. And that, and it's funny because you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways as they say. And so this Jewish atheist guy who came to Christ at age 45 is now a pastor. How does that happen? <laughs> hey, hey, when, when you find out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's that like being a pastor? How's that going? Uh, um, it, it's awesome. I mean, I, 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 get to wake up at, at 4 a.m. every day, do, do a morning show with my wife, leave the station uh, after talking about Jesus, because we're, we're not a typical Christian radio station uh, that plays you know the same 15 songs over yeah. and over and over again. We're a, a nonprofit Christian ministry that happens to operate as a radio station. So our number one focus is to tell people the truth about Jesus. So we do that. We play incredible music, Bethel, Jesus culture, uh, a lot of um, local worship artists from uh, churches that just happen to have some great music. Yeah. And then I get to leave there and I get to go to our church, Revolution Church in Canton, Georgia. Uh, we started we just started coming to church here, here four years ago and we were sitting in the back and um, somebody tapped us on the shoulder to start serving. And I began serving at the, at the door as a greeter. Uh, that's kind of my wheelhouse. I just kind of have this goofy smile on my face most of the time. <laughs> it's and, an important job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, p- Hey, people decide whether they're going to stay at a church or come back to a church in the first 11 minutes that they're on the campus of the church. Absolutely. So in the first 11 minutes, they don't see the worship leader. They don't see the lead pastor. They see the welcome team. They see the guy in the parking lot. They see uh, the greeters at the door. So I, I took that very seriously and uh, was having a blast and just kept getting tapped on the shoulder. Hey, what do you think about being on the prayer team? Hey, what do you think about being on the teaching team? Hey, what do you think about coming on staff? And uh, the whole time I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at him going, really? Me? Um <laughs> You know what I've gone through, and they said yes, and that's that's why. Uh, what what God has taken you through, He has prepared you for this moment, and I do believe that. If anybody's listening right now, I want to encourage them that He prepares us in our secular lives for what He's going to do in our, our lives as believers. And once you have trusted in Jesus. You are in ministry. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you're a a husband or a mother or a student or you work at a business or uh, no matter what your profession is, you're in ministry. It's not just for uh, the people that have a badge that say pastor or minister on it. Uh, So I I knew that God was preparing me for something. I didn't know what. I still don't know what, uh, but I'm just hanging on. And (laughs) And I know that on September 26, 2006, he hijacked my life. And, and Jason, when, when something is hijacked, it's taken in a different direction. But also, somebody takes control. Yeah. So I'm no longer going in the direction I was going, and I'm no longer in control. So I'm going to stay on this train. So good. David, you kind of probably just answered the last question that I always ask to every guest on the podcast, but I'm going to ask it anyways, and maybe you can rephrase your answer, or maybe it's a different answer. But what are you learning from God in the season of life that you're in right now? It's been 12 years, 12 plus years since you started walking with the Lord Jesus. Tell me what God is teaching you in this season of life right now. Um, Again, another great question. Um, in this particular see, I can get pretty specific on this one. Um, over the summer, my wife and I had prayed through a big decision. And working two full-time jobs and having the Clemson job, we had to pray through letting go of Clemson. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't mind saying that's a, that is a fun gig <laughs> to, to be on the sidelines for the games and to have that access and to – uh, you know, get championship rings and, and things like that. Um, we had to 
do something that is very difficult, and that is say no to a good thing, to say yes to the right thing. So in this particular season, I have been focusing on margin, uh, focusing on margin with my time, so margin with, margin with my minutes, um, and that's what led to saying no to Clemson, to make that phone call to my boss at Clemson Tigers Network and saying, um, I'm not going to come back this year. Uh, because when I am saying yes to something, I'm saying no to something or someone. And I was saying no more to my wife than I wanted to. Hmm. And I didn't want to give her crumbs. So uh, margin has really been a focus in our lives. Also, you know, margin in our finances. If we want to be generous givers, if we want to be generous people, uh, we we had to find margin in our finances. So, you know, we, we downsize where we live. We drive really old cars. And so we can be spontaneous and global and sacrificial givers. Uh, and these are things that uh, we had to wrestle with and we had to be intentional uh, about these things. And, and, and also really finding margin in my mind to rest. Uh, our pastor, uh, Jason Gertis, has said many a time, if we're not resting, actually physically resting, we're not resting in Jesus. So just taking moments and saying, all right, I'm going to focus on Jesus right now, or I'm just going to rest. It's hmm. really good. He is David Stein, host of Rise and Stein. On Vic I love that name. I'm just going to keep saying it. <laughs> Rise and Stein on Victory 91.5 <laughs> FM. If you're in Atlanta, check it out. You guys are online, too, I could imagine, if people wanted to check it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Victory.radio. Uh, Victory.radio. Awesome. Victory yeah. dot radio. Check it out. Six, six to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Um, if you if you live in the Canton area, uh, come to church. Find me on a on a Sunday morning um, as the spiritual development pastor. I'm I'm all over the place, uh, but I'm I'm the ball guy up on stage hosting the services. So <laughs> I love that. David Stein, it's been wonderful hearing your story, your journey. Such an encouragement. And uh, just thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing it with all of us. And hopefully we'll catch up again soon. Well, very kind of you to ask and continued success with the podcast. Uh, I, I love your posts and uh, always so encouraging. The verses you posted this week actually spoke uh, to, to my heart. So thank you. Hmm. David, thanks so much. And many thanks to David Stein, Atlanta radio host, host of Rise and Stein on Victory 91.5 FM in Atlanta. Also the spiritual development pastor at Revolution Church in Atlanta. Many thanks to David for joining us here on the podcast. And like I said, it's probably the most improbable story, most improbable journey to Jesus I've ever heard. Not just in the time I worked on this podcast in a couple of years, but I'm talking about any person I've ever met. Very few have a story, a, a testimony that David Stein has. And it's awesome. I love what he's doing now too, pastoring and hosting a, a morning show in Christian radio. Just so cool. And uh, we wish David nothing but the best. Send him a tweet. Let him know that you heard this podcast interview. He's over at Stein Show on Twitter, at Stein, S-T-E-I-N Show, S-H-O-W, Stein Show over on Twitter. Check him out on Twitter. Let him know that you heard his interview and his incredible story here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Thanks to you for listening. We also want to thank our sponsors, Compassion International. Go to Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum for $38 a month. You can help release a child from poverty. It's quite simple. Just go to the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Pray about it. Find the child that you'd like to sponsor. Click the button and you are in in sponsoring a child and releasing them from poverty with food, education, medical care, vocational training, all done in the name of Christ. Great work being done by Compassion International. Go help them out. Go sponsor a child today. I promise you, you won't regret it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Reach us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at sports underscore spectrum. You can tweet at me directly at Jason Romano or email me directly, jason at sports spectrum.com for any guest ideas, any incredible testimonies like David's. Share them with us. Email me directly. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to read all about them. And any ideas that you have that cross the intersection of sports and faith, 
That's what we want to hear about. Those are the interviews that we want to bring to you here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day.